Hi, I'm Mike from Craft Supplies USA, and today I'm going to show you how to turn a custom ring using a two-piece ring core. Turning rings is a unique project that always impresses, and we now offer these two-piece stainless steel ring cores from JDG. The design offers a nice contrast of metal and wood, making a truly unique piece of jewelry. They've got a comfortable radius interior profile, and the machining is so precise the seam is nearly invisible when completed. The precise fitting of materials requires a very accurate way to turn the rings. They can be turned using tapered ring bushings, or for the ultimate in precision, we recommend the JDG Pro Ring Mandrel. It's an expansion type collet with several steps machined for different ring sizes. They're available in two sizes to fit the two-piece ring cores, and they'll fit a wide range of our standard ring cores as well. For this project, you're going to need a two-piece ring core, a ring blank of your choice, some double-sided tape, digital calipers, a ring mandrel or ring chuck of your choice, some epoxy, and standard turning tools and supplies. Before we go to the lathe, we'll need to make sure our blank has a flat reference face. Simply lay out some 220 grit sandpaper on a flat surface and sand one side of the blank entirely flat. Now wipe off the dust and apply double-sided tape to the flattened side. Now flip it over and mark the center for drilling. At the lathe, mount a waste block, then true up the face using a skew. This will be our jig for drilling and rough turning the blank. Use a cone center to line up the center of the blank to the waste block. Apply firm pressure so the tape adheres to the waste block completely. Now, lightly rough turn the ring blanks around using a spindle gouge. Once the blank is round, it's critical that we turn the blank's thickness just a hair over six millimeters wide. But use your digital calipers here to double check your work because this needs to be precise. Once we're just over six millimeters wide, drill a hole through the blank using a drill chuck and a drill bit that's about half the size of your ring's diameter. Carefully use a scraper and open up the inside of the blank until the core can just slip inside. And of course, check the fit frequently for a proper fit. Now take the core off the lathe and remove any double-sided tape. It's critical here that the blank is exactly six millimeters wide for a perfect fit. To do this, lay the blank on a piece of sandpaper and sand in a figure eight pattern until your blank is exactly six millimeters wide. And use your digital calipers often to check the width. Once we're spot on six millimeters for thickness, we're ready to glue the core and the blank. To glue them together, we recommend using an epoxy for a flexible and permanent bond.
apply a generous amount of epoxy to the inside of the ring blank, then insert the two halves of the ring core. Use a mallet and lightly tap the two cores together until they're properly seated. Wipe away any excess epoxy and let it cure. I'll mount the Pro Ring Mandrel inside a collar chuck because I want the most accuracy. However, there are other mounting options that'll do the job. Insert the ring core onto the correct size step and lightly tighten with the hex wrench. Turn a flat profile with a skew using the sides of the ring core as sizing indicators. And don't worry if you scratch out the metal surface at all, because we'll buff everything out in just a moment. Once the wood and metal are perfectly flush, sand the blank through 600 grit. The ring core comes with a satin finish, but I want a more polished look for my ring, so I'll apply some scratch-free polishing wax to both surfaces. I'll also polish the sides of the core so we have a consistent sheen. Now apply some plastic polish for the final sheen of the blank and the core, following the same procedure as the wax. The plastic polish works great on steel, plastic, as well as dense exotics and stabilized wood. I'm all finished, but I want the inside of the core to match the sheen on the outside as well. Take the ring off the lathe and apply some masking tape around the outside to keep it from getting scratched. Then carefully secure the ring with a set of pin jaws. Use a wooden dowel and apply some scratch-free polishing wax into the core. Do not, under any circumstances, insert your finger into the ring while it is turning. Now use the same procedure with the plastic polish for the final sheen of the ring. If you don't have pin jaws, you can also use a Dremel with a small buffing wheel. Just apply some scratch-free wax, then polish the ring with the plastic polish as well. Once it's polished, you've got a beautiful, unique piece of jewelry. If you liked the video, click that like button and subscribe to our channel. And if you need any supplies or rings, click the link next to me.